This video is one of a series numbered 1 to 8, which cover the basic concepts of the primary mathematics curriculum. There are two sets of supporting materials. One is the Maths Mesh Guide, a summary of research knowledge and pedagogical knowledge. The second is the Numeracy for All booklet, showing in detail how to make and use the resources mentioned here. OK, 100 square is very useful for um, teaching uh, addition and subtraction. So uh, one way activity that teachers can do is they can ask children to find a number on the number square. Uh, and we're looking, we're going to be looking at patterns. So for instance, you ask them to find 36 and they place a counter or a bottle top on 36. And then we're going to ask them, we want you to add on 10, count on 10 from 36. So they'll count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then place another counter here. Then start on a different number, a different starting number, so you could get the children to uh, choose one, or you could throw a couple of dice to give you a to give you a starting um, number. So, for instance, they may throw sixty-eight. Um, so we can start on sixty-eight, and same thing again. We're going to count on ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and place a counter underneath. Choose another starting number. Let's go with 41. Place a counter on it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's go on another 10 from this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We'll go on another 10 from the same one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then when you've done quite a lot, you can stop and ask the children, can they see a pattern? Can they, every time they add on 10, what happens? Where is the counter placed? And what you're after is for the children to realise that in order to count on 10, a quick way to do it would just be to go down one row. Yeah, they don't have to count on individually. But what's important is that you want the children to discover this themselves. You're not going to tell them, don't tell them to add 10, you go down one square, because that's not going to make any sense. We need them to discover it from themselves, and that way they'll remember it. Um, so then they'll get to the point where you can say, OK, start on a number. Let's start on 29, for example. Now add on 10, and they're going to know I go down one. OK. Then what you can start doing is we'll clear the spot is to look at the patterns when we add on one. So if I start on 45, and then I add on one, I go to 46. Start on 77, add on one, I go to 78. If I add on another one, I go to 79, and so on. And now what you're asking the children to do is to look at the pattern when you're adding on single numbers, and they can see that they are moving across. So the extension then from this is if I now want children to add on say 23, give them a starting number so they can start on 35. If I want to add on 23, I know that I'm going down 10. That's 10. Go down another 10. I've gone down 20. And now I'm going to go across because I'm counting on ones. One, two, three. And 35, add on 23 will give me 58. Now, the whole thing is just in reverse if you're doing subtraction. So if I start on 68 and I subtract 10, okay, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoop, eight, nine, ten. 10. Then again, I've gone, this time I've gone up a, a row rather than, um, than across and down. Okay, so you can see how the link between addition and subtraction, all right, but as I said, the importance is that we're letting the children discover, don't tell them. Okay, here's another use for the hundred square. So what I've done is I've placed a, a bottle top and it's actually over the hundred square that has the numbers on it. Um, and what you could do, the children can play a game, they need uh, four of the digit dice, the ones that are um, labelled with seven, eight, uh, six, nine, and two zeros, and 
one, two, three, four, five, and zero. So they need two of each. Um, and then they can select <coughs> either two black, two red, or a red and a black. Um, so let's go with a red and a black. They throw them. Um, and they need to make a two digit number. So here they could choose 60, or if they want, they could just have six. Okay, so let's go for 60. And then the challenge then is to try and remove the bottle top that has 60 underneath it. So this comes down to how much time have they spent getting familiar with their uh, 100 square and do they know that this end here is the multiples of 10? Fortunately, I do. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. If I'm right, then that should be 60. If I'm correct, I keep the bottle top. And then another person goes and so on. And you can keep playing either for a, a certain length of time because you've got a lot of numbers to remove here. Or um, you can keep going until all the uh, numbers are, all the bottle tops have been removed. Now, if this is a little bit difficult for the children, what you can actually do is start with the 100 square only partially covered. So maybe you can give. So if you remove some of them. All right, then they know that this is the fours and so on. So you can just remove some so that only some of the uh, squares are covered. If they then make a number that's already uncovered, then they would throw again or they would make a different number. Another thing that you can do with this is after they've removed the bottle top that is 60, then they could actually give themselves an extra challenge and can they find the number that will go with 60 to make 100. So they need to work out, what do I add to 60 to make 100? The answer is 40. And now I've got to try and find 40. So again, I know it's over here. So 10, 20, 30, with a bit of luck. Yep. So now I've won my bonus bottle top as well. So you can sort of make it a bit more of an extension by um, extending it to number bonds to 100. Okay. Okay, one way to get the children to really understand the 100 square and to see the patterns in it is to do a simple matching exercise. So you need bottle tops that you've um, written the numbers 1 to 100 on them. Um, a tip, always have a blank one in case there's one go missing so that you can always write on it. If you haven't got bottle tops that are blank on the one side, then no problem, you can always write on the underside of the bottle top. So it's very simple. You just pick up a bottle top and you place it on its corresponding number. So, and by doing this, the children will be learning um, where the numbers are, how to build up the patterns, all right, matching numbers, there's lots of things. And the challenge can be, do it again. And can you do it faster? Do it in teams, compare it with each other. Who is the quickest? Which team can do it fastest? And here's a challenge for you. Can you do it as quick as me? More detail about the resources in this video and others can be found in this booklet, Numeracy for All, Resources for Teaching Mathematics, a guide for teachers and trainers on how to make and use low cost or no cost teaching and learning aids to encourage active and playful learning for maths in the classroom. Teach some maths. These videos are from a partnership between VSO International and the MESH Initiative. Both organisations have a commitment to share knowledge freely around the world for the benefit of teachers and learners. Yeah.